Good morning, good morning. Hope you're having a wonderful, let me fix that, a wonderful Thursday morning. <laughs> Very glad that you're here with me today. If you haven't been in one of my classes before, one of my on-ground classes, my name is Alex Cooper. I teach the computer classes for the Columbia County Library. And of course, I teach for the Columbia County Library in Evans, the Grovetown Library. Yay, that just got built, so we're very excited about that, of course. And, of course, the Harlem Library as well. So very glad that you're here with me today. Do realize that to post comments or questions, you do need to be logged into YouTube to be able to post that. So I encourage you to do that so you can also like and subscribe to our videos and stuff as well. And let me go ahead and... We'll talk a little bit about some of our classes that we have coming up and one going on this afternoon as well. There we go. Whoop, let me hang on. Where are you? Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> so welcome, welcome. Our class this morning is going to be Google Search and Internet Safety Basics. Okay. So this is kind of our three part, uh, third part of our series here. And I always start off class wanting to know how can I help, okay? So what questions do you have? Hello, Mac, welcome, welcome. Very glad you're here this morning. <laughs> Question is, how can I help, of course? What questions do you have? Uh, by popular demand, one part that we've added today is about uh, spotting fake news and spotting fake articles, and also we'll throw in there a little bit of spotting fake shopping sites as well. So we'll be discussing that about trying to figure that one out. So Tuesday we covered Scratch. Uh, some of the videos should still be available up here on our YouTube channel, GCHRL videos okay and yesterday we did gadget help uh, Q&A with me Alex hello <laughs> uh, on the Harlem Facebook page but also the videos here on YouTube so that is still available the interesting thing about that is we also did some troubleshooting on a Samsung phone and then we kind of ended up having someone ask some questions about being certified for um, office and different different programs like that so we kind of started talking about different classes that you can take free classes to the library like universal class so it was really interesting and then we actually did our let's make a game class in the afternoon that's still available up on our YouTube channel as well so this morning we're doing the Google school um, the Google search and internet safety basics yay okay and this afternoon we're going to be doing it 2 30 like I said these are being posted to the, the individual library Facebook pages, but also it's available here on the YouTube channel. So if you do subscribe to this YouTube channel, you should get updates when we post new videos for all the libraries. Uh, so this afternoon at 2.30, we're going to be doing Introduction to Raspberry Pi and Computing Ideas. And one of the neat things is I've got a box to open. Oh, a little semi-transparent. <laughs> but anyway... So look, came to box came. Ooh, got to open it. Ooh, what's in there? And also we'll be opening this container as well. This is for our Raspberry Pi stuff, and it's got all kinds of neat little gizmos and gadgets in there. We're gonna be talking about that. See if we can hear it. Ah. So definitely come for that. We'll talk about different projects we're gonna do, and I'll do some hands-on stuff as well. Here's a list of all our classes that we covered this month. And this afternoon we'll be posting the one that we'll be doing this afternoon um, for next month. The big thing is that a lot of the classes are already been posted at gchrl.org. So keep an eye out for that. All these, vi these videos are still available up either on the Facebook pages for the libraries or on YouTube. So yay. <laughs> all right. So... A little side note here, our libraries are open, including our new Grovetown Library, yay. Uh, our curbside holds pickup is available. For more information on that, you can go to gchrl.org for details, or you can call the in the library for questions Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. 
to 5 p.m. Don't forget to like us on Facebook for updates and also don't forget to like our videos on YouTube and also subscribe to YouTube uh, channel as well. GCHRL videos. All right, so let's talk about what we're going to cover this morning. So one of the things is I'm actually going to have the handout and I'll be kind of flipping back and forth. So let me go ahead and post the handout in the chat. So give me one second. Everybody's kind of coming to the classroom and everything. Okay, it's loading. Hold on. <laughs> it's going to think about it. Okay, while that's doing that, <laughs> we'll go ahead and go and look at our handout here, and then it should be able to finish loading, and then I can post it, okay? So we're covering Google search and internet safety basics. So basically because we're of course staying virtual and we're not having any classes at any of the libraries, we're doing all virtual classes of course because we're home staying safe and everything. We kind of uh, kind of pushed our boot camp classes to be more virtual, more online, kind of broken up more into the subject matter of what you're interested in. So let's talk about what we're going to cover this morning. So this is kind of part uh, three uh, slash four of our boot camp computer classes. So if you've taken the other two classes that we have up available, the Windows 10 flash drive, the introduction to browsers, uh, this is like part three slash kind of four because they've been kind of melded together. So we'll talk about what is a search engine website. We'll talk about search basics and let me zoom in on that to make it a little bit bigger. Search engine results. We're going to talk about printing. We'll talk about print preview, print scaling, add more keywords. We'll also talk about Google tips, okay? And we'll talk about searching Google's different categories. And then we're going to talk about scams and fake news, okay? So let me go ahead and check my handout. Okay, it's still thinking about it. I'm glad it's thinking. I just wish it was loading. There we go. <laughs> All right, so post this. All right, so there's the handout. Okay, so you can kind of follow along. One thing is I like to recommend is basically if you have me on your cell phone and then you can actually uh, follow along with me and then have it on the main computer here okay so let's talk about what is a search engine okay and if I'm blocking I will kind of jump out of the way here so we'll talk about what is a search engine uh, website search engines of course are like Google Yahoo and Bing search engines basically index key phrases for us index keywords okay and they deliver them to and adding it to when we we find we type in keywords we use uh, phrases it searches the websites that it has indexed or cataloged okay and then gives us those sites now one big thing about this will also help if you're trying to talk to little devices like Alexa devices or even Siri devices when you ask them question or course when you're asking Google questions on your Google app okay like on your phone 
So not only do it thinking about the different keywords that we're going to talk about today, help you get that work done. It also will help do main, do uh, main searching, but just kind of think about the way the computer asks questions or the way it likes to be asked questions, okay? So one of the big things is let's go ahead and we're going to go to google.com. So let me go ahead and do that. Here's our google.com. Of course, I'll zoom in a little bit here. Okay. So let's talk about our keywords. Now, what we're searching for today is basically who wrote the poem, The Road Not Taken. We want information about the author that wrote this, and we're going to kind of follow the breadcrumbs a little bit. Okay. Now, as we ta type, Google will actually give suggestions about what other people have searched for, what's popular with those same words that we're typing in. Okay. Now, I do have to say I have a little bit of an add on that actually gives a little bit of a preview right here. I can tell you what that add on is. Give me one second. We talk about this in the but talk about this in the browser class. And what is this one called? Oh, this is it. Oh, wait a Search preview is what it's called. And it's actually recommended by uh, Firefox. Okay. It is a good idea to have some kind of ad blocker program and, you know, kind of get used to that so you can turn it on and off as well. But it's called search preview add on. And it gives, when you use Google, it'll do a little bit of an extra. Um, you know, picture of the website, thumbnail, thumbnail, that's a better term. And I'll give you a little bit of extra there. And if I actually go and turn that off, we do our Google search, it'll kind of look like that. So I'll try to be a little bit more about what you guys see. I actually forgot that I actually had that on. But if you wanted to download that, you just do the search add-ons and like I said it is where is it now okay it is called preview search preview like I said it has this gold thing means it's recommended by the Firefox okay which is the browser I'm using this morning okay so let's see what we have we first have and I've zoomed in a little bit so y'all can see here we go uh, they actually give us a little bit of description here on the right side, the road not taken. We get a little bit of a preview up here with pictures from images. Okay. We're going to talk about our different categories a little bit here. Mm -hmm. First we see it gives us the website address. It'll give us the, um, in purple is the link that we can actually click to go to. And we actually have our little bit of description. now. I will tell you this, the interesting thing is that uh, Google will make changes to different things. Okay. And it looks like they've actually made a big change that I did not realize they had made. I wonder how recent this is. But it looks like they've actually moved the website address to the top here and then have the link below it and then have the description. So if you see in the handout, this is the way it's been for long time <laughs> searching Google and stuff there you go right there but let's talk about some of the things we've seen in our search engine excuse me in search results one of the things we see is we can actually see right here it talks about how many search results we have well I don't even see that in this this is interesting so they removed that as well for some reason I guess they felt like it was not Let's see. Oh, it does pop up and tells me what sites I visited before. So like I said, Google will actually make changes to stuff. Long time ago, this was called the everything uh, button. Now they call it the all button. 
I kind of like the everything because it made a little bit more sense if you didn't know what you're viewing there. So it doesn't show us those results anymore. Interesting. Used to it would show this, so that I guess they've changed that. But one of the big search results we'll actually see is wikipedia.com. So let's talk about that for a minute. So we see some sites like Poetry Foundation, Poets.org. Okay. And you see the Paris Review, okay. Some suggestions. People also asked other questions. And the road not taken, Wikipedia. If we scroll down, it might show us videos. And if we hover, it actually get a little bit of a preview of the video. It's interesting. It's a bunch of articles talking about uh, misreading the road not taken, okay. And if we scroll down, it also will show search related to the road not taken down here. Summaries, themes, PDF, the meaning. And then we also have folks talking about uh, maybe it's really not about two walking down the road in the woods, which it may not be. Hmm. This also, we have this big long Google thing. And we can click the next page or we can click next here as well. Now, supposedly, uh, they say, statistically speaking, that after the first two pages, uh, the average user uh, quits and says, well, I didn't find what I was looking for. I guess they don't have it. And then they kind of give up. Well, I don't want that to be you, okay? I want you to go, hey, I can actually change my keywords, add more keywords. Is there a different way to search for this? Maybe the information's out there. Maybe I need to find, uh, maybe I'm not saying it uh, the most common way that someone would ask these questions. Try to think about it that way, okay? So most of the time, I recommend trying to get the information to come to us, okay? So let's scroll back up here. And we want to talk about Wikipedia. So let's go to our Wikipedia page. Now, I usually ask, what does Wikipedia sound like, okay? It sounds like encyclopedia, that's right. Uh, it is similar. The only negative part about Wikipedia is the wiki part, okay? So wiki really means user submitted information, okay? Uh, depending on what your topic is, there's lots of different websites uh, that have wiki information on it. The problem is that you can actually go in and make changes to these articles, okay? It's a bit of a group mentality, have 100 people in a room, and the loudest hopefully are right, okay? So you can log in, come in, make edits to some of these articles. Someone else may come back and say, oh, that's not right. But a lot of the times we can actually scroll down to the bottom and then there's a reference section. I had a student once tell me about this. A reference section down here, and I could actually click on one of the links and it would actually show me uh, some of the, um, you know, the, where they got this information from and be more likely to be able to use that information, which we'll talk about, you know, checking our sources later, okay? So who edits Wikipedia? Who writes Wikipedia? Wikipedia will say, you do, okay? So as far as using that, a lot of uh, schools, uh, teachers, professors will say things like, don't uh, use Wikipedia because it can change, okay? And a lot of the time we don't know where the information comes from even if they did uh, post references. All right, so what exactly is a blog, okay? A blog's a website. You can have a website that's a blog. Places like a Blogger by um, uh, Google, uh, other websites like WordPress, you can have your own blog. We actually have a blogging class that we teach as well. And you can have your uh, opinion known to the world or whatever project you like to work on. Some, let's say someone does uh, sunflowers, okay? They wanna tell everybody about this great uh, sunflower 
uh, food that they got for the sunflowers and they're growing great. Well, this is kind of a great place to have something like that. Social media is kind of like a blog. Okay, when we talk about Facebook, mostly it's to um, individual friends that we have. And, uh, but it's kind of like our own blog. And a blog mainly is people think about the whole world can go there and read it. Okay. So let's, since we talked about that, let's talk about other keywords that we can use. Now, if we were not getting the information that we were looking for, okay, we could have added more keywords to our search. Maybe we could use the word poem, maybe author, okay. Find out more information, poem, author, what else can you think of? Poetry, okay. Now, just by going by what we typed in, let's see what we have. Well, it comes up right here on the right side. Even though it does say the source is Wikipedia, it does say Robert Frost, but also we have a website called Poetry Foundation, and it says the road not taken is by Robert Frost. I can get a little preview, and again, here it is right here, Robert Frost. So that means that the poem is most likely, <laughs> uh, at least the one that we're talking about today, was written by Robert Frost, okay? Now we could do another search and actually search for Robert Frost. So let's do that. There you go. So it's talking about Robert Frost. It looks like he passed away in 1963. So we found out information about him. We did a search. Now let's go ahead and let's open up the one that says Poetry Foundation. Talks about Wikipedia of Robert Frost. Here's our Poetry Foundation. The Road Not Taken By Robert Frost. Let's click that one. Here we go. And it takes us to our page, doesn't it? Okay. This is Poetry Foundation. They have the whole uh, uh, poem here. There you go. All I could think was poet in my brain for some reason. They have the whole poem here. <laughs> and then we also have our play button. They do, they do have um, audio, which is nice. The Road Not Taken by Robert Frost Two roads diverged in a yellow wood and sorry So you can listen to it here One of the things we're going to talk about is uh, printing a little bit So we found something that we want to print So we talked about browsers last week In our Windows 10 class we talked about printing in Windows in general Okay But now we're going to talk about uh, printing from our web browser, okay? So let's talk about our printing options, okay? So if we're in Firefox is what I'm currently in. Uh, if we were in the new Edge, if we were in the older Internet Explorer, it's recommended to use the new Microsoft Edge or Google Chrome, any of those three that we talked about uh, last time. If I go up here and I click our three lines, it's three dots if it's in the Microsoft Edge, and go to where it says print. It gives a nice print preview of our, our poem here. If I scroll down, we can actually see, oh, well, it's more than one page. So if we look at our different settings, first we get our print preview. It's very important when you're going to print something off the internet to make sure that you see the print preview and why is that? Well, one of the big things about our print preview is that the the we don't know what it's going to look like if we're going to, if we're typing something in Word, having it in, even in PowerPoint or Excel, we kind of have an idea what it's going to look like. But printing off the internet, it could change the size. It could be, it could add advertisement to our printout. They can do that. 
um, and you don't actually know how many pages something is. Now, the example I give with that is uh, a while back I actually was printing uh, the Oscar nominated movies, okay? Because we're going to watch the you know Oscars on TV, wanted to print that out. I actually had print hit print and walked away from my printer and come to find out because I just clicked print and then print <laughs> I did not pay attention to how many pages something was uh, the nominated uh, movies were actually on the first page and then it had actually printed 10 pages when I came back because the other eight pages it printed were all comments I love this movie I hate this movie I hope this movie wins I hope this movie loses you know those kind of comments in there and uh, if I had looked at the print preview, I could have seen basically how many pages something was. Now, if we look at the top here, it'll say one of two, and I can click the button. It'll show me the next one, okay? We also have an option up here where it says shrink to fit. We also have portrait and landscape as well. We have shrink to fit, and we also have percentages. So we could go and change the percentages. Now if we say 175%, you'll see it does bleed into the second page. We have a total of three pages. Okay. Now what we can do is when we actually print, we can actually tell it the page range. Okay. So the page range allows us to tell which pages to individually print, okay? Which ones to have on there, and of course, which ones we want to exclude as well. And we see that in the print preview. So if we really only wanted to print the first two pages, or of course the first page, then this is where we would actually choose that as our print range. So if we go up here to print, it'll pop up here, and we can say pages, uh, what about the first two? So one dash two, okay? Or you just, of course, say first page if I resize it and get everything I want on the first page. So kind of the goal is to have it. Oh, that's perfect. Look, it cut it off right there, okay? So I, when I go to print, I only have to tell it to print the first page. hit print there and then it'll print now let's see what our other options are so what we just talked about is the scaling uh, shrink to fit is kind of default but like I said or showed or displayed or exampled <laughs> we can actually choose whichever one we want okay uh, and also custom I do know that the Microsoft Edge one recently doesn't have the custom size but instead of having to go to a or copy this to a word or something and I just want to print from here uh, the custom size does allow you to be more specific and maybe you can get all the contents you want that are on the the one page you know and then just print that one page alright so let's go ahead and let's exit out of that now I'm gonna hit close and it takes me back here now the other options are this a lot of websites have this, um, especially if it's a recipe, it's a news article, uh, something like this, a poem. Uh, usually it's near the top area, but it could be near the bottom here. Okay, so there's the Twitter connection, Facebook connection, there's also an email, this is someone, but there's also one that says print. Now if I click that print, it will not give me a preview and sometimes it means that you can it'll open it up as a, a PDF file okay so one of the things about that is if I take my mouse and I actually click on that I've actually had it where I was printing a recipe and <laughs> I was printing a recipe and the interesting thing was that the the website had actually added an advertisement to what I was printing and I couldn't see it until it actually printed okay good or bad now the funny thing was it was a food recipe I was printing of course and the the advertisement they had actually added onto there 
was an advertisement coupon for Pizza Hut, okay? So I don't know if the website was trying to tell me something about the recipe or what it thought my cooking ability was, but there you go right there, you don't know. But a lot of the times it can remove any kind of advertisements that are on there. Our websites are getting better and better about not including the advertisements when we print, but it still can happen as well. Also, if you're printing an email, uh, don't try to, used to it was a big deal because if you just went up to print, it would also include the left side here where it says inbox, you know, in all your folders, but and then you would go to the individual, um, you would go to the individual print, uh, excuse me, the individual email, and then hit the print button on there, which made it a lot better because they did not include anything listing on the left that said inbox. I even had a student one time uh, come to me and bring me a printout and goes, how do I get rid of this where it says inbox and everything on the left side? <laughs> hey, Jane, how are you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Absolutely, when the you should be able to rewind the video and you should be able to, it's gonna be posted later too. So if you ever want to rewatch it or fast forwards for certain parts. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's talk about more keywords on Google. You click the back button and go back here. And let's talk about other keywords that we can add to Google to be more specific with our search, okay? And again, this is one of those, if you have a smart device, it's a good idea to kind of have this in your mind instead of just asking a question, maybe throw some keywords in there. Yeah, more likely to find the information you're looking for, uh, even with the smart devices too. Because a lot of time they're doing like a certain type of search, okay? Maybe add the word book, maybe add the word movie, news, a poem, official is a good one, especially if you're thinking about going somewhere, or wanting to look up a city or a, a country or something say official, maybe pull up the official tourist guide for that uh, place. And also weather is a good one too. In our Google school class, we actually go more into weather and about basically it tells us where our weather, um, what the weather is. <laughs> uh, in certain locations we can actually give it a zip code, type in weather and it'll pull it up too, okay. Now, think about is there a different way to say the same thing, a different spelling, okay? Uh, one website may say, let's say we were looking into Robert Frost and when he was born, okay? If we typed in Robert Frost born, that may pull up a different website because the other website may say the Robert's uh, birth or it may say D-O-B, okay? So it could be all of those. Uh, well, not all of us, but it could be uh, any of those that they could change and it could be something different, okay? So now let's go ahead and let's search for Time Machine. The first thing that's coming up here is we're actually looking for the Time Machine book. So when we actually type in Time Machine and Google will give some suggestions, we're actually typing in. Uh, so if you are interested in any of those suggestions, just click uh, the the button there and it'll pull that up as well okay and then we'll talk about our next part so let's talk about let's go ahead and search Google for time machine now one thing as I want you to get used to going up here to the search and you can erase what's there at any time you don't have to go back to google.com to, to start a search so if we do time we do time machine and then hit enter, see what our search results are. Oh, it even comes up and suggests poem, okay? 
So if we look at our search results. Oh no, we're getting stuff about Apple software. I guess it's called Time Machine as well. Here's Wikipedia, Time Machine, how to set up Time Machine, backup Time Machine, Time Machine software for Macs or Apple devices, Time Machine the movie. Uh, we built a real Time Machine. I'm sure it works really well. And all kinds of stuff too. So that's not what we want. Now, what we could do is we could add more keywords like the suggestion here, Time Machine. I didn't know there was a poem when I actually think about it because we've been searching for poems. Uh, aha, suggested based on your recent activity. That's great. And in this search, it actually shows us how many search results we're getting. I'm not sure why on the main screen it didn't show us that. Interesting. Uh, so it's not a poem, it's a book. We could add the word book. We could add the author's name to get more specific, but we're gonna talk a little bit about being a little bit more advanced with our search and talking about excluding words, okay? So one way that we can exclude words is we do a minus sign, okay? The minus sign removes the words. Apple, uh, we're gonna move the word Apple from any of our search results, okay? By putting a space, minus sign, and type the word Apple. Now, make sure that you're not, you, there. make sure there's a space here because it thinks it's a hyphen. If not, okay? And you wanna make sure there's no space in between here and Apple, okay? So it knows that it's a minus sign. So I do space minus Apple. And there we go right there. It pops up. Now when we see our search results, we should not see the Apple software on here. It's still possible. Maybe it's Time Machine and they're calling it Mac. They're not using the term Apple at all. But as we kind of scroll down, we're getting more information. H.G. Wells, Goodreads, there you go. All right, so the first thing, of course, we get is Wikipedia to come up. And if we scroll down, we can find more information uh, than just Wikipedia if we wanted to. So you could put in minus Wikipedia. You could put in minus Wiki. You could put minus whatever other topics that you want, and you can actually have more than one minus, which uh, helps out a lot if you want to get more specific. So I recommend being general with your search and then get more specific with it, okay? All right, now another thing we can do is we can actually add quote marks, okay? Our quotes, we can actually put the words or phrases and it makes them not be able to be broken up. Now, what I mean by that is, let's say we were doing time in a time machine, just like we have listed there. And we actually have it in quote marks. Okay, so if we do that, it will not be able to break them up because if we did just type in Time Machine, not only would it pull up topics where it said Time Machine in that order, also it could pull up a poem that says, hey, one time I was driving down the road and saw a machine drive by. Okay, so we don't want that. So putting it in quotes is a big help. All right, now let's talk about our different categories. And we're actually gonna search for Columbia County Library. Now, one big thing we need to do is to make sure that we include, oh, come on, we, that we actually include the word GA, okay? For short for Georgia, of course. The, the, um, so when we're searching, I'll pull that up. So we'll go up here and we'll type this in Columbia County Library GA.
and it pulls it right up. There's our gchrl.org website. Okay, talks about the different branches. Here's the main website here. Even lists our Facebook page, how to get there on MapQuest, all kinds of good stuff. Even on Wikipedia. There you go right there. All right, now let's talk about our different categories, okay? The first one is all, and my picture has web. Uh, it's interesting, it used to be called everything, so they change it. They try different things every once in a while. But you click, that's our main one that we search, but we do have our other categories here. We have images, okay? We also have ones that'll move around. Yeah, let me show that. So because we typed in, looks like a location, maps has popped up here, images is here. So these will actually move around in the different order based on what you're searching for, or what Google thinks you're searching for, okay? So that's to try to kind of help us, uh, you know, ask the right question. I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> so we have maps. We have, let's go ahead and let's click images. And we've done our all search or our web search or our everything search. We've got lots of good suggestions here at the bottom. Okay. And if we go back up to the top, and we actually click images. This is supposed to actually be what's known as a visual search engine. Okay. So this kind of turns Google into a visual search engine. There was a time when those things were supposed to be the, the new the new thing that was going to happen and the Google kind of incorporated it so you can use it if you want to. I'll tell you the two ways that images are used. Uh, one way is basically they type hit images, type in the name, and you can visually search for something. Okay. So you go, okay, yeah, there you go. Imagine looking for a hotel you stayed at, maybe a landmark someplace. Uh, you're not really sure the name of it. You can do it visually. Another good example is I go up here and let's say I was walking down the road one day and I saw a lady walking a little black dog that had pointed ears. I know it was a terrier, but I'm not really sure what it was. So let's see. Um, let's see. Black dog pointy ears. Okay. Very general. I'm trying to figure out what the breed was. Okay. Oh, and I know it was a terrier. So I had the word terrier. All right, so let's look. No, that wasn't it. No, 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 no. Oh, maybe, maybe, no, no. Yep, I think that's what it was. And if I click on it, let's see, does it pop up and tell me? Uh, my example is I'm trying to uh, point out that a lot of the times you can actually just look right here to find out the information you're looking for. <sighs> Let's see what that is. All right. It says right there, it says it's a Scottish Terrier. So that's the kind of dog that I saw walking on, walking uh, down the road one day. So very visual, very easy to find stuff. You click on the picture. If you want to go to the website, then you just click here again. It'll actually take you to the website that had the picture on it. Now, how does Google know what these pictures are of? Well, the Google may actually not know what these pictures are of. It may be that they're showing these website, these pictures to us because it was on a website that did have the keywords that we typed in, okay? So that's kind of how it knew to pop up and show us that. All right, so let's go ahead and let's go back. Oh, there we go. Coma County Library GA. Let's go back to our handouts. All right, well, let's talk about our maps now in our online computer uh, computer online shopping and digital couponing class 
We of course will use our the shopping section and we'll also use some other programs to do a little bit better shopping, look for coupons and stuff, but that's some of the other categories on there as well. Okay. Now if you were looking for videos, you could click where it says videos. Google actually has its own uh, video hosting site and they also own YouTube as well so everything's kind of integrated together okay and then also we have news as well so search specifically news sites so let's go ahead and let's show that so if I go up here and I click news what this is supposed to do is it actually pops up and it will say most recently so if we look down here a week ago something that's a month ago may 6th information so when we actually click the news category it's supposed to only show us uh, uh, articles websites uh, that have been listed basically as news sites or maybe even blogs can be included in this as well uh, mostly local news local newspaper stuff like that based on our category and it will show us the newest uh, first that pops up okay we have our Google down here at the bottom as well so that's what news does now let's say that you want to be more specific than that what if you said you wanted to search the uh, in the past at a certain time well if we go over here to tools and if we actually click and say uh, uh, recent it'll pop up now believe it or not the tools button is there when you're searching generally through Google okay so it is there you click it and it shows these other options We can also choose like the past hour, past 24 hours, past week, past month, and it also has archive or it has one that's a custom range that you can type into. Now a lot of the things that can happen is that when you're searching for something uh, at a certain dates, uh, maybe some of the local newspapers could actually not have that information on their website because either it's behind like a paywall that they have set up and you actually have to go to their website, sign in, maybe even pay a fee. Uh, most of our libraries actually uh, basically uh, collect <laughs> uh, the newspapers. So usually if you want a newspaper and the downtown Augusta Library has ones that go much further back or they have copies like on microfiche and stuff like that. Um, in the library resources class, we talk about the Augusta Chronicle as online up to 1993 right now I believe meaning you can go back in time to 1993 uh, through the website through the, the library website and be able to view those articles there but you have to kind of see what's available uh, online but there you go it'll pull it up if it is available so that's a huge resource All right, now, oh, I wanted to show our maps part because our maps part's fun. So let's go and let's click maps. And it pulls up. It's almost like we've gone to a different website, you know. This is also available on your phone you can or tablet. You can download an app They're called Google Maps. You probably have used this a uh, few times to maybe get directions to go somewhere but this one we're, this time we're going to kind of use it to more explore now we have different sections here we can actually set it to satellite view which is the, of course the preferred view why is that per the preferred preferred view just because it's satellite photos so we can actually see this now uh, the big question I get asked is how old are these photos <laughs> you will have to check 
Sometimes it may not be very clear how old they are. A lot of these satellite photos are actually photos stitched together. One of the things we can do is we can actually zoom in. And there's our Columbia County Library in Evans. And there's the lake. And if we go out here, we can actually see in this picture, of course, oh, neat. The pavilion, apparently when this picture was taken was, I guess that would have been, um, it was definitely last year. I don't, I think that's the only time we've actually had a circus come. <laughs> I guess it was taken while the circus was here last year is the most recent. So if we go back here, ah, we can see that the, the Performing Arts Theater possibly doesn't have the siding on it yet because when the picture was taken. And then we can zoom out a little bit. So you kind of get the gist about that. So is this live? Is this current? may or may not be. I've seen some pictures that were a while ago. So let me give you a, a scenario that can help out with this. So let's say you have a family member that's going on, um, you know, on a trip. Maybe they're going to a conference by themselves. And one of the things is the, uh, you want, what you want to do is you don't want them to have to, you're trying to get a place, the conference, uh, in the hotel and that's not available so you actually look for a different hotel using Google Maps you could possibly look and see which side the other hotel is on the same street and try to get a hotel that's close to the other place and it'd be very easy to tell uh, how close they are so uh, the best part about that would be maybe even the same side of the street you could see if there was a sidewalk and you can see how far the person would have to walk, okay? Uh, save money, not have to rent a taxi or an Uber or whatever, and uh, stay safe. Maybe the person could actually go back to their room during lunch breaks or different breaks or stuff like that. So there you go. Now, let's use one of our features here. We can take our little guy, we can take him and drop him. Bloop. And that actually, as long as where our uh, where it was blue, when we're dragging him, wherever it was blue, we drop him. We can actually see street view. This allows us to turn. I'm doing the drag and drop. Okay, allows us to turn. And if we take our mouse and we hover kind of in the middle here, it'll an arrow pop up, and we can actually walk down the road. Again, where do these pictures come from? This is where Google actually has sent a car uh, to drive around. Sometimes you can actually look down and see the shade of the car. It's like a big, big uh, uh, 360 degree camera. And as we actually move down the road, we can actually move around in time, okay? So some of these may be newer pictures, older pictures. And if we go up here, we can actually click here and it actually will tell us how old the picture was. So this is April 2012. And I'm trying to get down here to the Art Center. And so it's right there. There's our uh, pavilion and everything. And if we actually go up here to Street View, we can actually go back in time. You ready? So this says it's 2016. Oh, it's forward in time. So it's far back in this area. I thought we had one that was further back. Yeah, okay. So if we actually click 2012, that building's not there. 
of course, the pavilion's there. And there was a, uh, I'm not sure what it was. I thought it was just right here. But there actually is a place you can go and stand, and the pavilion's not even there, been built yet. Because it has pictures old enough, like 2008 or something. This might be it. No, that's not it. Anyway. So yeah, it's kind of fun. So do you realize you can go and play around with some of the dates on the street view? Of course, you if, if it's important, you want it to be basically as, this is kind of neat. It's like uh, they took one picture here, one picture, and they kind of stitched them together. And you can also go back in time a little bit to our little bit of time travel, okay? All right, so Hope you enjoyed that. It's pretty fun. Uh, you can also travel a little bit yourself. And I'll finish up with So like here's the Statue of Liberty. All I did was type in the Statue of Liberty. And they also have a really cool 3D view. So I can kind of zoom in. If I click right there, make it in 3D, it allows us to kind of do this swoosh thing. But one thing that's really neat is not only can you zoom in and they try to kind of have a 3D, it's not perfect, trust me, especially with you deal with a bunch of buildings. But if you drag our little guy out here, you'll see where the blue line is. We can actually hang out right here at the foot. Here's all these folks come out to see the Statue of Liberty. And if we look up, we can see, there you go, she's right there, okay, doing street view. So you can even travel a little bit uh, just by using our Google Maps, okay? So let's go back. And we want to go back to Google. All right, so now let's talk about protecting ourselves online. We're going to talk about scams a little bit, and then we'll talk about identifying fake news, and we'll talk about passwords and HTTPS and all that kind of good stuff, okay? All right, so protecting yourself online, a big thing is to make rules, okay? Don't give out personal information if you don't have to. Uh, just because, let's say, a couponing site says, "Hey, what's your email address? What's your, you know, your your mailing address or whatever?" It doesn't always mean that you that the service that you're signing up for has to have all that information. Uh, definitely be aware of one that asks what your social security number is for some reason. So phone number, age, birthday, maybe even you want to make a little bit of an alias, <laughs> that could be kind of fun. A big one is, if it sounds too good to be true, what did grandma say? Sounds too good to be true, it probably is. So definitely be aware, it's kind of come to my attention that there's a lot of, let's say if you're using Facebook, there's a lot of advertisement popping up on Facebook and then you actually click on it and it looks like a good legitimate website come to find out either they're selling a poor quality product or it's not what it says it is they may even use key terms like Amazon to get you to touch it and then it's not at an Amazon site and you're not ordering anything from Amazon it was just what the the click uh, clickbait said to get you to click on it so definitely be aware of that okay so if it's a product that has uh, you know over $200 uh, and it's been super discount and it's selling it for $25, definitely be aware it may be some kind of scam. Or if it's a product that one website's selling and then another website has and it still looks legitimate, it may just be kind of a copycat. So just kind of be aware of that as well. In a minute, we'll talk about using our credit card, not our debit card, so we can kind of challenge charges uh, a little bit easier. 
So let's talk about scams, okay? A big thing that'll say something like click here to win free stuff, win a free uh, big screen TV, <laughs> or something like that. Just be aware it may just kind of be a phishing scam looking for your information, okay? So has anyone heard of the check scam? Let's go ahead and check that out. So what exactly is the check scam? Well, a big one, and we still receive checks in the mail from businesses, don't we? Uh, so basically, someone contacts you, and in some way they need you to, and if, if you're a business that accepts credit cards, especially if you're a small base business, maybe you're saying, hey, I'll cook some uh, baked goods and I'll use like PayPal or Square, one of those companies, and you build your little website, well, you might be inundated with a bunch of calls that say, hey, uh, can you, you know, overcharge this credit card? For me, I have another service and then send some money to someplace else. Uh, so that's a scam as well. It's like stolen credit card numbers. Just like this, getting a check in the mail, someone says, hey, can you um, cash this for me and then send me the money, gram me the rest of the money uh, and take it out what you want. Let, let's say it's a $1,000 uh, $1, um, check and it's to you. Uh, it may be a real check, but when it actually goes back to the banking system, it will bounce and you basically have sent somebody money and then you will owe that money to your bank. So do be aware of that. So that's kind of how the, uh, the check scam works. Other kind of scams, a big one is the scam alert, the FTC. The Consumer Information FTC.gov is the best website to go to, and they actually have a scam alert. So this is really great to look at. Uh, if you've heard something that's odd, strange, something new, somebody, and this is really a good one to, uh, I know that we shouldn't be uh, um, gossiping, as some people would say, but this is good gossip. This is scam gossip. This is, hey, I heard in Evans that people are being called and people are on phone on the phone saying that they're from the FBI or they're all or they're all excuse me or they're from uh, the IRS and if you don't pay the money now we're going to come arrest you. Uh, we take Visa, Mastercard, you know, over the phone. Those are scams, so do be aware of that. Even as legitimate as it may sound, okay. Uh, here's one talking about different imposter scams, and it's just as you see that's very recent. Uh, the posts on here. Ah, look, it even says scammers impersonate FTC2. So, this is something that the FTC has put out, uh, senior public affairs specialist. So it's some inf interesting information. They too can be kind of not them scam, but actually someone pretending to be them in some way. Okay. So we have to stay vigilant, like uh, steer clear of working home scams. So if you hear something kind of, as some people would say, hinky or odd or strange or something, uh, Iris won't call you about stimulus money, donating in difficult times. Ooh, the, this game is a chain letter scam, so be aware of that too. Some of those they talk about, uh, you know, fill out this information. What was your first where, which high school did you go to? And all this, and people are putting that out. It could be possibly used as they're trying to guess your pa password. 
uh, but then some of them are just silly and fun. Luckily, we actually have uh, WJBF has a cyber scams video site. And that's it here. Have lots of videos on here talking about different cyber tips. Scam alert, beware of text message scams. So all kind of stuff on here. So it's a good resource as well. Ah, interesting. So Max says she almost daily receives notifications that her Netflix service had been canceled. And basically to tap here to type in her username and password and credit card. Yes, be very, very uh, aware of that. <laughs> uh, the best thing is in general, and we're kind of going to talk about that in just a minute. But the best thing is to, uh, phishing scams. It's don't click on, or even in some of our text messages, don't click on the uh, actual link that they send you. Best to go to the website yourself, okay? So if you want to check that, pull up a browser, go to netflix.com, log into your account, and then if Netflix doesn't say anything about that, then it would be a scam. Another one is uh, email scams. Things like no free clothes, like you receive something that said, hey, I can send that off and uh, you receive a free uh, credit card, uh, gift card or something. Uh, send this to 10 people, there's no way they can track that. Get a free gift card to Kohl's or something. And be aware of any kind of email that you receive that basically says, uh, dear sir or madam, or dear, uh, one of the things is that Apple's really starting to push is that uh, they're making sure that they're when they send someone an email about something, it does actually use your first name that you have registered with them. Okay, but even that's not foolproof either. I will receive uh, spam emails that say my first name on them. Okay. Big one here is a bank or credit card company will not request your information by email. They won't say something like, you know what, we forgot your email password. <laughs> uh, or we forgot your uh, password. Can you click here to log in? Now, I do realize that on the computer, a lot of the times we can take our mouse and we can hover over the link before we actually go there. But we can't really do that with our phones uh, before we actually tap on something, okay? A lot of the times you can kind of press and hold, but it, ten, it depends on what browser you're using, um, if it'll actually show you what that link is, or you may just be clicking it anyway, okay? So a bank credit card won't say, hey, uh, I forgot your username and password. It may say something the effect of, hey, uh, why don't you log in and then find out the information that way. Now, I'm really starting to recommend more uh, to actually use the bank apps and the credit card company apps to access your accounts, to access your uh, credit card information. Uh, some of those things are coming up with uh, better features. Okay. Max says, also calls from the IRS, Social Security, etc. Telling them they are coming to, yeah. Yeah, well, if it's on your cell phone, one of the things you can do is a lot of the Companies have anti-robocall uh, apps you can put on. Verizon has one called Filter, and hopefully that'll cut down on that. Uh, there's one that I uh, recommend as well. Give me one second. Let me pull that one up. You look on my phone and remember, hi, yeah, that's what it is.
H I Y A. So basically, this helps kind of fight uh, robocalls. Uh, mostly it'll pop up and say uh, spam calls. This is an app that you download to your uh, cell phone. <laughs> uh, they do have two services. They have a free service. They do have a costly uh, cost monthly fee service as well. I just use the free one. Yeah, if you get more of the same calls, you can add them and they have like a big database. And you see they kind of partner with other companies, Samsung, AT&T, uh, T-Mobile. And it kind of helps out with uh, lessening your, your uh, annoyance calls. There you go. It's featured in all these other websites too so big recommendation about this like I said they have a free version a cost version but I just recommend the free one we have an amazing team here at Haya working on mobile app development fighting phone spam and innovating for the future We've attracted seasoned people with impressive backgrounds from many of the leading tech companies. Hi, I'm Brent. I am a software architect on the mobile team. My key focus is on building integrated solutions that will ship on 100 million devices next year. Hi, I'm Chris, and I manage the identity services here at Haya. Haya operates in over okay, 190... This video is apparently more about their company than the service, but the service is great. <laughs> yeah, that's more about the who works at the company than work using the the app and stuff all right so let's go ahead here so that should help kind of recommend something like that the other at least maybe it'll be labeled as spam call so there you go right there all right a big one about email addresses okay a free service kind of like coupons or whatever a free service that you do requires you to log in uh, could equal your email address being sold to like a spam company so that can happen okay of course we like our free services <laughs> our information how often we've, we've used the, uh, the you know the service or whatever could be used to kind of sell to somebody uh, do realize that uh, one thing is to make sure that you're going there and labeling the spam emails you're getting as spam, not just deleting them. Okay, that'll help your filter get better, smarter for you. And if you're using services like Yahoo, Gmail, because you can get free emails through them. Uh, the one thing is that you could set up another account if you wanted to but I do recommend it kind of best now to spend a little bit of time maybe make put newsletters into a newsletter folder automatically in our email class we talk more about that uh, setting up the folders and everything and the labels when it uh, is focused on Gmail and another thing that you can do is if you find that it's a really bad uh, spam email maybe even send it off to the Federal Trade Commission okay spam at uce.gov is their email address that they want you to forward uh, spam emails to okay uh, this kind of helps them uh, get cases together uh, get the information out there Yahoo and the rest of them they kind of talk to each other about certain things especially if it's a sneakier email coming out but things still get through uh, the different filters all right, so let's talk about, oh, any questions about that? Questions about that? Okay. 
let's go ahead and let's talk about fake news a little bit and also checking our sources kind of for anything all right so these are things that we receive an email uh, it looks like it's a, a news article maybe a friend forwarded it to us maybe we see something like on social media Facebook Twitter uh, you know even Instagram or something a big one too is if we see something pop up and it says it's going to sell us something okay or just in general information so here's a great uh, looking a little simple checklist three checks to ask yourself about every source okay a big one is visual check go to the website you're reading it you're going ah, you know is this is this true is this not true uh, look at the background the side is it well made are there ads from products you recognize does the title use all caps uh, avoid headlines that provoke strong emotions so it may be just a way to try to get you clickbait on something okay site check check the website address be careful for URLs that are similar to popular news sites it could be com it could be your favorite news source and then it says com co or something like that or the address is just a little bit different sometimes they'll put hyphens in the address so it looks like it's a new site that you're familiar with but it's really not okay uh, the about us of the website section who wrote this information is it biased in some way one issue with someone having blogs um, it may look like it's a new source site to us um, but it's just maybe a glorified blog that someone's just giving their opinion on something fact check are other sources covering the story that's a really big one uh, this is one that's it's information interesting about let's say a, a famous person celebrity has passed away uh, there's certain celebrities that every once in a while it'll make the rounds that they have passed away and they make jokes about that but how can you check that well have you checked other news sites have you checked other sources to see if they're also covering this information to how accurate it is okay make sure that you read a uh, reputable and multiple sources not just one source of information okay are there links in the article to other sources so I really like this um, it kind of goes into the the basics of questioning critical thinking okay and we actually have in 2016 study by the Stanford History Education Group indicates that K through 12 students and college students do have difficult uh, difficulties identifying credible objective and non manipulated information online so this is one of those things where it kind of affects all ages um, like I said kind of these three rules can help out check the website and a big one here are, are other news sources covering this information as well okay or sources in general okay uh, I would add on here if this was a product I would add uh, check the reviews see if you can find a website type in the product name if you can type in reviews even if on YouTube see if someone has reviewed that company uh, what they're what they're putting out um, it may be um, not real okay maybe a product that looks like another product so here's kind of our original source it's from the HACC library if we scroll down here so if we look here on the left side we see a whole lot more fact-checking information their course is snoops.com which is a great resource scroll through here uh, the ftc.gov website we talked about uh, and uh, mostly is focusing on consumers being scammed of course this is going in about focusing on different topics news information going around is that real is it not um, best to not get our news just from a meme or a TikTok. <laughs> it 
if you have family that loves uh, TikTok, you may all of a sudden hear them say, oh, I heard that on TikTok. Well, you might need to check a different source than just uh, you know, the dancing website, okay? There's also AP Fact Checker. When this is kind of like their uh, blog as well, including the latest things that you can kind of scroll through and see what you had heard. Hopefully they're covering it. Hopefully the, the thing that you had heard about has gotten big enough, I guess, that it's also included as well. Uh, fact check. There's also, um, let's see, PolitiFact as well. And if we go to specifically what is fake news, it's a great infographic here talking about that. Consider the source try to read beyond kind of what we talked about supporting sources but again I really like the idea of are the other uh, news um, outlets you know covering this story um, if it's just one do you realize that even this website will talk about there are certain uh, uh, is it a joke <laughs> uh, there's a website called the onion that will put out fake uh, articles as jokes and every once in a while uh, some of the um, folks will actually cover it not realizing it's a joke and there's a bunch of other sites that are like that too so someone maybe sent you something did not maybe they received it from somebody else maybe they posted it didn't fully read the article maybe they did and did not really read read that it was a satire or a joke okay so do realize that there are websites out there that it's not really fake news, they're comedy, okay? So they're putting out stuff and their angle is that they're making their comedy joke news look like a real newspaper or real something like that, okay? So just be aware of that as well. So kind of trying to look beyond fake news. Clickbait is the big one, of course, we talk about. In a minute, we'll talk about keeping our passwords safe. Okay. Uh, is it conspiracy theory? And a lot of the things uh, here you can actually deal with is it, whoop, I didn't mean to click that. Uh, one of the things we can deal with too is, um, is there money involved? So if they are someone that looks like they're trying to advertise something, maybe it's an article. Uh, I'm a, I, it really does aggravate me when it's just a news article maybe they'll do a bunch of clickbait articles you go there and then it wants you to click next slide next slide or next page just so that they can show more advertisement where it's just a sent a paragraph or something about the information you're actually looking about maybe you can find that information on a different website so just kind of be aware of that as well but remember if you can follow the money maybe the money is that they want you to go to their site so that they can show um, advertisement to you and they'll get money that way as well be aware if they're trying to sell something and you're, if you're unfamiliar from that website you may want to go to the Google shopper uh, search for that website and see uh, what kind of ratings uh, that website has or the better bidder business bureau before making a purchase or even donating uh, do you realize there are scam sites out there for donating so be aware of that and uh, you know just try to be uh, vigilant and be aware as well okay we talked about snoops.com there's kind of a factor crap <laughs> website talking about finding fake news and I've got other resources here as well All right, so let's talk about our password tips and we'll talk about making purchases online and keeping ourselves safe as well. So password tips, and I'm going to go to Norton. So password tips, do not make the same password for all your accounts, okay? That's a really good idea not to do that. 
Uh, Norton here actually has a password generator. And if we actually scroll to the bottom, it'll actually talk about <laughs> uh, passwords not to have, okay? So it talks about weak passwords. <laughs> so don't make your password a password, okay? That's not a good idea. Don't make your password one, two, three, four, five, six, or QWERTY, or just some way, you know, A, S, D, F, G, uh, something that's just on the keyboard. It's not a good idea to make it like a child's name or their birthday or something. Uh, don't always use the same password on different accounts that you have. Make sure that for your bank, credit card information, it's definitely a password that you don't use on anything else. A lot of the banks uh, will actually make you do a new uh, password every once in a while. So do realize that. So, you know, very secure for online banking, credit card, things like that. Like I said, I'm trying to kind of push more folks to download the apps now, uh, the banking credit card company apps just because it seems like it's a little bit more secure, uh, those than the, the websites. One, it's on your device, uh, and they keep updating the, the apps uh, to the latest version, or they won't let you actually into the website at all. Excuse me, into your account at all, not your website. What about adware and spyware? So. We kind of delve this into a little bit more in the security class. We talk about what a VPN is and stuff, more detail on that. A big one is to make sure that your computer, Windows is up to date, your cell phone. So when it kind of pops up and asks questions like, hey, do you want to uh, you know, update your device? You know, definitely give it time to do it. Oh, your, your, your phone is, fit, is kind of full with photos and videos. We can't update your device. Then try to, you know, back up those. A uh, good recommendation is to use the Google Photos because it's free. You just set the setting to high quality. It'll back up your pictures and you can actually delete the pictures that are and videos on your phone to free up space so your phone can do, be backed up, okay? We talk more about that in the camera two class, the uh, photography class. Okay, so up to date, make sure you have an antivirus program. One thing that, that can happen is basically you get a new computer. Norton, let's say Norton, McAfee. One of those will actually come with a, a software program that says, hey, you can use this for a year. And you go, okay, that's great, but um, uh, what happens after that year uh, ends and then they come back and they say hey I hope you enjoyed your free year but now we want you to describe annually to our um, you know service and you go okay well maybe I don't want to do that and then it looks like uh, the McAfee or Norton is still working well the problem is it means that they're not downloading the uh, virus definitions okay so they do not have the latest virus definitions anymore and that means that it's after a year uh, maybe two years that means it's not getting the latest virus definitions and anti-malware definitions to be able to fight that stuff because you didn't subscribe to it anymore so it's not downloading the definitions anymore I know I just said that twice uh, so basically what should I do well if you're not going to subscribe to those services, it's best to uninstall because antivirus programs only one only will run at the same time. Only one will run uh, at a time, and then basically uninstall that. You can allow the Windows free Windows Defender that comes with Windows uh, 10 uh, work, or you could download a different one like AVG Free or one of the other ones as well. Okay, so that's kind of my recommendation. So to make sure that you have the latest uh, definitions for the viruses and anti-malware as well. Now, if you get, get any kind of pop-ups, I know we don't re usually get that as much as we used to. Oh, also make sure that your, your browser is up to date. 
Most of the time when our browsers start, it'll check to see if there's a newer version of it and it'll automatically download it. But just in case, um, if you're not sure, you may want to go to the settings and say, is there a newer version? Basically about the about and update or something like that. Uh, so if we actually go to this site here, Let me copy the right one. Interesting. Looks like Norton has been uh, either bought by a different company or something. Okay, anyway. sure has it has moved over to what's known as Broadcom interesting all right let's see let's see okay so this is kind of what I want to show you. So it looks like that web address has actually changed recently. Um, so this is at the Norton.com website. They basically have information about malware. Preventing malware. Tips on malware. Online scams kid safety, identity theft, how to as well, okay? And that was at Norton.com. All right, so let's talk about uh, making a purchase online, okay? Now, one of the big things is you want to make sure before you make a purchase online and I will use a different browser because I know it's not logged in. So before making a purchase online, make sure that up here it says HTTPS, okay? So what exactly is HTTPS? Well, that means that it's secure or encrypted between you and the web browser. Now won't go into it too much. Our internet security class, we go into this a lot more about what the, the different terms mean. Mainly is this is for if you're making a purchase and you're using a public Wi-Fi, let's say most McDonald's, most Starbucks, you know, hotel or someplace, not really your home Wi-Fi because you would have your own uh, password when you first set it up, okay? Uh, to connect to it that way and you would actually be uh, you know available to to keep the information but most of our websites now do push push the HTTPS okay so you'll see the padlock up here okay you'll see this now I actually have not logged in as you can see it wants to pop up and say what's my sign in it's already pushing HTTPS but make sure before you make any purchases from any websites that it does say that because it shows that they're more of a legitimate site, uh, especially with your um, credit card information or anything like that. Now, you want to make a purchase online, but you're not 100% sure what to do. Well, a big one is do realize that uh, the best recommendation is to use a real credit card, okay, not a debit card, because the debit card, the money can come out of your account immediately, okay. Basically, making a purchase comes out of your account. 
Uh, immediately, you can actually question it later, but it could be problematic. Or it's Visa and MasterCard. And one that, or you know, if it's a real Visa or MasterCard, American Express card, you could challenge the charges later, maybe even before you've made the payment um, to them. And there you go, right there. The other thing that you can do is you can actually purchase uh, gift cards. Walmart, CVS, you know, Target, they have these really big gift card sections. A lot of these stores, it'll have gift cards, let's say for Netflix, uh, Amazon, Kohl's, even the online stores. So do you realize if you do give a gift, let's say someone a gift card to Target or something, or Amazon or Kohl's, those all have online stores that, that they could purchase from as well using that gift card. So let's say you want to buy something off Amazon, you're, you're concerned about, or even eBay, I've seen eBay gift cards. Um, want to buy something on there, go in, put $20 down, and they give you a $20 gift card, and you use it, and when the money's over, it's over. Okay. Now, the other way to do this is you can actually get a Visa MasterCard basically a gift card. You'll see those two at a lot of these places. Some the, This actually will charge a little bit of fee most of the time. Okay, no, it's not what I want. They kind of call them a prepaid card. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up the site. Now it doesn't want to pull up. Okay, so this gives a little bit more information about it. Uh, some of these, uh, I believe Walmart has a green dot. So you basically pay money to put money to, um, you pay a little bit of a fee to put money on the card. Of course, the benefit is that if someone did get your credit card information in some way, that you could actually, um, you know, you challenge it just like it's a real credit card, but do you realize when the money's over, the money's over on it, and you only and it's not connected to like your bank account in any way that they can actually access it that way, okay? Like they would with a debit card. Another thing that you can do is um, we have your Visa card, have your gift card, the green dot card. Uh, oh, that was it. Uh, a lot of the things you can do is you can actually get a different temporary number from the credit card company as well. And if you're going to make a purchase online, you could use that. Uh, it'll only be like available maybe 24 hours. I do know that Capital One has like a separate app you have to download to be able to set that up. Um, but you can do that and allow you to, to question it there. Now, I do actually recommend having the the apps on your phone, especially with the credit cards, uh, because one of the things is every time, let's say I make a purchase with a credit card, I get a little notification letting me know that the money has been spent on the card. And there was one time about two years ago, uh, it was early in the morning, and I actually had set this, so I was getting an alert. So da 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 da, uh, you spent you know twenty dollars uh, at a restaurant. Da 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 da, you spent fifteen dollars at a store. Da, 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 da. you spent $25 someplace else and I tapped it and I go is this me and I tapped it and it said it was in Atlanta and of course it wasn't in Atlanta I was in Atlanta actually uh, about two months prior to that so that's maybe when someone got my credit card information or something I immediately called the credit card company let them know and the lady even thanked me for letting them know about this so quickly. I said, you know, because I called within about five minutes here, I find out about it. And she said, thank you for letting us know so quickly. So they actually actually thanked me. Now what she did was she said, okay, we're gonna cancel this card number and we're gonna send you a new credit card, no charge, and these charges will not, you know, you won't have to pay these charges because they're fraudulent. Now, you may say, well, how did someone get the number? I don't know. Can they guess the number? Yes, there's certain algorithms and software and stuff like that that they can try to run that will actually try to guess what credit card numbers are 
and then they run them for small amounts and then maybe we don't notice and then they'll try to charge them for larger amounts okay so how can we be vigilant how can we do this do definitely recommend checking credit card statements uh, reviewing all your statements your bank account at the end of the month make sure that there hasn't been any kind of uh, you know charges that you didn't know about now one of the things that can happen is one store their credit card processing company may have a different name like if you go up and you get gas from uh, the Walmart I, uh, I don't know if it's all of them but I know the Walmart and Evans and in Grovetown you actually get gas there it'll actually say it won't say Walmart gas on your statement later it actually says Murphy USA okay so do be aware of that you can actually make legitimate purchases and for whatever reason uh, the credit card processing company may have a different name or it may just be really generic and you and a lot of the time you may have to research to see what the number was but do realize if it is fraudulent contact the credit card company as you know quick as you can if you are using a debit card try to contact the the bank as soon as you can as well just call the number on the back of your card okay you don't have to have a fancy app installed on your phone you can just call the number on the back of your card and they're happy to answer any questions you have okay all right so we've kind of come to the end here uh, let me see if there's any other things that I think you might need to know so we have covered a lot in this class the searching the protecting ourselves uh, online like I said the big thing is to tell other people about scams and the CSRA we've actually had I haven't heard about it recently but there was uh, a bunch of credit card skimmers that were being put on like um, the gas the self-service gas tanks in certain places there was even a bank in Martinez that someone put a credit card skimmer on uh, to try to capture I think at least eight to ten people were arrested with that a scam that was almost a year or two ago and the the big thing is if you are somewhere and oh wait there was even one that we had locally that someone went in and put a skimmer a skimmer is something that they put on top of looks like a credit card reader and it actually is reading the card but it sends them the information um, the other one is they try to put up some kind of camera at an ATM machine so they can skim your card and uh, see what numbers you put in more and more of our ATM machines are trying to have more of a, they're hiding the you know the look what we're touching all kinds of stuff and just kind of be vigilant be aware uh, a lot of the times you can actually type in YouTube and say like traveling uh, found uh, skimmers there's a few videos I've watched where it's uh, people that have gone and traveled even out of the country and even walk up to one and it's like he's a he's a tech uh, security professional and then he goes and he finds it and he goes and warns the police about it and he said do you see this right here he said this is a skimmer and you know in the real world so not just talking about it and uh, you know be aware how can you know if it's a skimmer you may not be able to tell sometimes they can things can move like I said we actually had one locally where someone went into an actual uh, gas station store and put a skimmer on top of their credit card reader so that was literally in the store okay uh, that's about all the details I know about that I don't know how long it was there or anything like that but there you go we have to stay vigilant have to check our credit cards let people know if we think that there's a scam involved and of course share the information about the the scam um, as well okay so before I start talking about some of our other classes that are coming up, any final questions?
All right, so since I don't have any other further questions, let's go ahead and start wrapping class up. And I actually have the schedule for the end of the month to show. So we'll go ahead and talk about that as well. So this was the July classes that we had. Uh, these videos should still be available either on the Facebook or, of course, this YouTube channel, GCHRL Videos. Okay. And this afternoon, I'm going to be doing Introduction to Raspberry Pi Computing and Project Ideas. And like I said, I've got uh, two boxes we're going to open and kind of play around. We've got our nice little noises here and our inner boxes. And let's talk about here's our schedule for August. Okay. We've got two new classes that we're going to be doing. We're going to be doing Scratch uh, to Python blocks to coding. So come for that class. Just got the certified to be able to teach that class. So very excited. Um, on Evans the 4th, uh, we're going to be doing birding and library resources and apps. And then on the Harlem for Harlem Library, like I said, all our videos will be actually here on our GCHRL videos on YouTube, but also I'll be posting the links on our certain uh, Facebook pages for the different libraries as well. So Scratch to Python, Blocks to Coding on the 5th, okay? So last this week we've actually done our coding, so next week we're going to go a little bit further with our coding we're going to start learning about python and i've got a great website that also will include uh, basically makes python code uh, into basically kind of lego blocks similar of course to our scratch and we'll learn about that as well okay one of our newer video one of our newer classes we're going to have is video creating basics we're going to be using the microsoft photos app that comes with Windows 10 which is free we'll talk about making slideshows we'll talk about editing videos adding sound editing title cards and also adding 3d graphics and special effects as well it'll be a lot of fun it's a new class and hopefully you can come up tell me about what kind of projects you're working on and we can kind of discuss and get more details also we're going to cover Google school the Google suite of products eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and the like. And we'll be doing this class again on the 20th, but this time on the Google Search and Internet Safety Basics on the Columbia County uh, Library and Evans page. And also we'll be doing the next week Internet Safety and Security. So those kind of go together. And then at the end of the month, on the 27th, I'll be doing uh, Gadget Help and also Gadget Help on the Grovetown Library website as well. So definitely come join me for those. little side note again, uh, we, we do realize our libraries are open and available <laughs> with limited services and availability. Uh, curbside Holds Pickup is available. You can go to gchrl.org for details or of course you can call into the library with questions Monday through Friday 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. And please don't forget to like our Facebook pages and, of course, like our videos and also subscribe to our YouTube as well. And uh, thank you so much. Please don't forget to, to um, yeah, it's me. Also, don't forget to uh, like our videos and stuff and share them with friends or family. And I hope you're staying safe. And it is a wonderful day outside to get a little bit of exercise and maybe even find a geocache or a munzee because we talked about that in our geocache and munzee classes so i look forward to seeing you this afternoon we're gonna have to find out what's in one of our goody raspberry pi boxes with all the kind of good little gadgets in there and motors and stuff and what projects okay so come join me for that and have a great uh morning <laughs> And I will see you this afternoon. So bye-bye for now. <laughs> bye.